We are switching gears again. I bet many of you have heard about AI, artificial intelligence, which is really a buzzword, a buzzword out there. So the next topic uh, will somewhat deal with that, Dr. Bhattacharya. Good evening, everyone. Artificial intelligence or AI is probably the most common term that people brings up in every conversation nowadays. But the question is, should we be scared of AI or we should embrace it? For all the confused owls here tonight, believe me, you're not an exception. Humanity has faced this kind of fear in the past as well, like with the nuclear energy. But Many of you might already be imagining AI as this dark face that you may have to face in the future, like what you have seen in the movie Terminator, where the AI robots fought with humans for supremacy. But trust me, in reality, the human and AI interaction is going to look like my friends from Star Wars. You can see the two AI robots, C-3PO and R2-D2, who help humans with their everyday task, from translating language to navigation. But reaching this level of technology is easier said than done. There are many challenges in designing AI algorithm. Much of it is ethical, like how to implement these kinds of tools in our regular lives. But most of it is purely technical. For example, explainability. We still don't understand why AI algorithms suddenly behave in a different way in specific scenarios. Second is biases. We need to really make sure that the algorithms are not trained with biased data sets. Otherwise, they will reflect our biased world. So we want the AI to work with us. So in very simple words, we humans are developing these AI algorithms so that they can work with us as teammates, not competitors, so that we can build this beautiful world of human autonomy teaming. But this is not an easy task. But this is where my work comes in. My research lab, Neuro Interaction Innovation Lab, specializes in the interface of human and AI. We host students from different disciplines, electrical engineering, computer science, data science, and from different levels, undergraduate, masters, and PhD, who work together in this space. Now, personally, I started using AI algorithm in the autonomous driving space six years back. My background is in neural signal processing, and I started implementing these algorithms for driving, for predicting different events outside the car. Soon, I received my first funding in the year 2020 from the US Army. And I got the opportunity to work in the human autonomy space. We developed our first algorithm, which understands the brain signals of human soldiers and predicts events outside the autonomous combat vehicles of the army. We further developed this algorithm into a multimodal fusion model, where we not only fused brain signals, but we also started fusing signals from muscles, eye, heart, and skin. And together, it can accurately predict event and make decisions in real time for army. And this is one of our novel discovery. So, we wanted to understand how human body reacts to different events. So we started focusing on one event at a time and trying to correlate that to different groups of physiological signals that work best for classifying those events. And here we are. Now, not only military space, one of my PhD students is also applying these fundamental discoveries in the civilian space. He's building an AI model that is capable of differentiating driving styles of new drivers with no driving history. And this can lead to a path where we can negotiate insurance premium for these drivers if they are classified as safe drivers. While working on this great AI project, we also identified very interesting design gap in AI, and we are calling it AI blind spot. For example, if there is a change in environment, most of the time, the AI algorithm screws up. But we humans do not, because our brain knows how to adapt. The great news is, 
we got funded this year from DOD to study the natural intelligence and understand how our brain adapt and utilize that strategy to train the artificial intelligence. Now, for those who are thinking not all AI project is obscure, I want to let you know one of my PhD is also using brain signals to control wheelchairs. For example, if you're thinking of moving forward, the chair takes you forward. This is mainly for people who are disabled and they cannot control their wheelchair with a joystick. Now, this is called brain-computer interfacing and the technology already exists. But the speciality is my student is using resting EEG signal. So the current technology takes hours and days to train the brain signals before the user can use the wheelchair. But our technique removes all of that. We are building a pre-modeled AI that can be used with the real-time brain signals for any user. Not only technical contribution, another important area that we are trying to focus is education in computer science. So all our contributions are published publicly so that anyone from anywhere can download the codes and algorithms, can improve it, and maybe make something better that can help the world. So at the end of the presentation, I would like to assure you that AI can be a great teammate as long as we humans are responsible about what we are designing and to what extent we are relying on it. You'll be surprised to hear that all the images that you have seen so far in my presentation are AI generated completely. So AI is already part of my team and I think it's time for you to include AI in your team to make your life easy. Isn't that correct? Have a great evening. Thank you, everyone.